We have 300 meters distance connected to multiple PDZ cameras and SS point. That's why we're using customized copper inside the composite cable. We have Hi tech lovers, welcome back to Fast Cabling. Have you ever wondered how massive outdoor areas like transit station keep all their security cameras and SS point powered and connected, especially when they're hundreds of meters away from the main control room? Well, we're diving into a real world challenge we faced here. All the endpoint devices are 300 meters away from the main control room, and our three headaches are bandwidth, reliable power, and weather. So today, I will show you how we solve all three with one cable run, one pool, one route, data and power together from a central cabinet straight to the pole. So this is the STAR composite fiber optic cable. Inside one jacket, we have two single mode fiber strings for data and power conductors for low voltage DC power. In our case, we have 300 meters distance connected to multiple PDZ cameras and SS point. That's why we're using customized copper inside the composite cable. We have 2.5 millimeter square, roughly 14 gauge. And at the central, we're feeding 55 volt DC power that can push around 80 watts out to roughly 300 meters with manageable voltage drop. Now, if your loads or distances change, you can size the copper accordingly and order the cable that fits. And our team thus consults on sizing and preterm options if you need help matching gauge to distance and power. And some might wonder, why not just PoE++? There are two reasons. First, distance. We all know Ethernet over copper is specific at 100 meters per one. So at 2 to 300 meters, you are stacking extenders and adding failure points. Second, power. 802.3 BT Type 4 tops out at about 71 watts delivered to the devices. And you're stuck with small gauge copper pairs in the Ethernet cable itself. It's good for short run. But it's not good when you're fighting voltage drop over hundreds of meters. And fiber avoids the distance and bandwidth compromises entirely. It's also future-proof. Even if today's switch is gigabit, the fiber you install today can take 10G modules later without retrenching. So let's get straight to the setup and we'll start here at the network room. So at the network room, we can see many devices on the rack. And this is our network video recorder. We use this to display video footage. And we have to connect it to our Ethernet plus fiber managed switch to get data. So the Ethernet cable is already connected to the NVR. Now let's connect it to our switch Ethernet port. And to get data from the composite fiber optic cable, we're using a fiber patch cord to connect to our switch. We need this SFP transceiver so we can connect to the fiber patch cord. And the fiber patch cord is going to connect to our termination box here. I will explain it later. Now the data is taken care of. For power, you have to size your AC to DC supply to the 4N loads plus margin. And for this build, we're setting the supply to DC 55 volt to fit the composite copper conductors. Now, let me explain. This is our termination box. It gives us clean string relief and easy patching. The fiber lands on the LC connectors inside and the copper lands on the power terminal block and everything is labeled and protected inside the box. So if we ever need to service or expand, this box is the first clean handoff. Now our composite cable needs the room in one piece, fiber plus power from the termination box and in a single armed jacket and head out to our station. Optional? But recommended here is 
and outdoor Ethernet search protector. Outdoor post invites lightning in searches, so to protect our switch and camera's electronic, we have to add the search protector and ground it. You can also protect the DC power pair depending on your site's risk profile. Now you can see the power conductor are connected through the air breaker and the surge protector and the fiber optic cable connected to the LC adapter and to a fiber patch cord. Let's turn it on and you can see it is already grounded. So the fiber patch cord and power is coming out to our outdoor workhorse. This is our outdoor PoE switch. It has an IB rated aluminum enclosure designed for harsh environment with carrier grade surge protection. Also minus 30 to 60 degrees operating range. The most important thing is it accepts 36 to 60 volt DC. Perfect for our central feed composite cable. Now let's take a closer look. It has 8 gigabit PoE port for our devices and two SFP fiber slots for our uplink and redundancy. It's an L2 Plus managed switch so we can do VLANs, QoS and even ERPS. Now let's bring in our composite coppers to the DC input to power this up. And next we are going to bring in our data Let's slide in our SFP transceiver here and connect with our fiber patch cord. So now we have the data and the power. We're going to go ahead and connect our Ethernet cable. So we can use PoE. Both power and data sent through a single Ethernet cable. Let's connect it to our PDZ camera. And then another Ethernet cable for our access point here. So we can see all our devices are getting the power and data it needs from our outdoor PoE switch. And next we have to bring in our laptop so we can watch the video feed on the VMS software. We're using an Ethernet cable to connect straight back to the switch since this is our control center. Then, here's our VMS software. We're going to device manager to search for our PDZ camera. So this one here is our PDZ camera, let's add it. You can see it is connected already. And the VMS software has many controls. There are recording settings, also playback you can use for the PDZ camera. Now let's go to the monitor, click on it. Now we can see the live video feed and this is our PDZ control panel. I'm going to move it. Left, right, up, down, nozzle, zoom. It works perfectly. So at 300 meters, PoE++ over copper can be tight for PDZ and multi-devices, but fiber avoids the speed over distance trade-off and the composite copper let us deliver stable low voltage DC. And don't skip the protection. An outdoor surge protector and proper grounding are cheap insurance against lightning strikes and surges on metal poles. So for our setup, the payoff is big. There's no local AC outlets at every pole, no PoE extenders, cleaner maintenance, and a fiber path you can upgrade to 10G optics later if the plaza grows. 
And if you're planning a large outdoor project, whether it's surveillance or Wi-Fi, definitely check out the composite fiber optic solution. You can find more details and custom options on our website. And before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Thank you very much for joining us. We've got more smart network tech videos coming your way.